A financial advisor is said to look out for you to manage your portfolio and maximize your returns. That's part of the requirement for our job. However, their true loyalty lies with the bank or whatever institution they work for. Name of the game, move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. Here's a true story about how my wife and I want to consolidate our debt. We went to a very well-known, well-established Canadian bank. We spoke to a young kid, he was about 25 years old. And after meeting with him, discussing on the best rate, how to best consolidate it, as we were wrapping up our conversation, no word of a lie, he, well, maybe this is part to meet his quota, said, Well, would you guys be interested at all in a visa? What? Well, considering we just consolidated our debt, we came to see you to get our debt down, we're not really interested in a visa, we're thinking. My wife and I were dumbfounded. We looked at each other and then just looked at him and said, no, we're not really interested. No, sorry. Why, why would you offer us a visa when you know we're trying to consolidate our debt? It makes no sense. I couldn't fathom how this entered his head, but then after thinking about it, oh yes, he has certain quotas, standards to meet. He's not really looking out for us primarily. He's more concerned with himself and representing the bank and their interests. That you finally found a broker on Wall Street that you can trust and who can consistently make you Sound fair enough? In my earlier years, I fell victim to many of the same things that many other people have. I got into investments I didn't really understand, where terms were thrown around at me, and went with whatever sounded good. Listen to smooth talking salesmen telling me the latest and greatest thing that I should be investing in. Even falling victim to credit card debt and the enormous hassle it is trying to dig yourself out of that one. It took a lot of reading and independent research, but over the years, I'm a lot wiser with my money and I want to pass on an immense amount of knowledge that I gained through my CPA courses and my 20 years as a corporate accountant so that you don't make the same mistakes that I've made in the past. Remember, nobody cares about your money and your investments as much as you do. Simple, but it's the truth. Remember that. A financial advisor cares primarily for the bank and their institution. Most financial advisors just can't beat the market. Only about one out of 10 financial advisors can actually beat the street or outperform the market. So if you do get lucky and happen to find a financial advisor that can actually outperform the market, well, it won't be by much. Add in their commissions that you have to pay of one to 2% and suddenly your investment portfolio is underperforming the current market. Hey, if you feel like you're getting something out of this video, do me a favor and like Graham Stefan would say, smash the like button because it tells the YouTube algorithm that I made a good video that's decent and people enjoy watching. It is very, very much appreciated. Not to mention, what if that advisor leaves? Suddenly your precious investments are thrust back into unknown hands. An investor you don't know. You don't know this financial advisor's track record, what the risk tolerance is, how good they are. They might start tossing around complex terms such as hedge fund, portfolio optimization, arbitrage strategies, stuff like that to sound big and make it all complex so that you don't understand. In essence, these strategies should be really simple that, that you, you understand. understand. Most of the portfolio options that these financial advisors offer are either high fee, average performing portfolios or average fee, low performing portfolios. Only one in 10 has a good mix of both and they are hard to find. You pay regardless if your portfolio makes money that year or not. You'll often hear financial advisors boasting and bragging about how they generated a 15% return in one record year. What you'll very seldom hear about is how they underperformed for many years but continued to charge that one to 2% management expense fee every year, even though they underperformed. Suppose you invested $10 million into a portfolio and it underperformed and dropped by 15%. This equates to losing $1.5 million that year. However, the financial advisor continues to charge that one to 2% management fee every year. This means that you paid 1% times $10 million equals $100,000. You paid $100,000 to lose $1.5 million. Let that sink in for a minute. I'll just give it a minute. It'll sink in. A tailored commissioned high-end portfolio will cost you around three to 6%. 
Now this might sound okay if you're generating a return of say 15%. However, you'll feel that ding a lot more if the market drops or worse, you even lose money and you're only generating a return of say three to 4%. Suddenly that three to 6% hits you a lot harder. <laughs> Financial advisors might come out and say they have all the strategies. They have an inside track. They have knowledge of the markets. If anything, we've learned from movies is that nobody can beat or time the market. It's basically unpredictable and nobody can guess at what's going to happen. Nobody knows if the stock is going to go up, down, sideways, or in fucking circles. Least of all stockbrokers. Right? Index funds will outperform actively managed funds almost every time and make you more money. Since 1990, index funds have consistently outperformed actively managed funds almost every year. Index funds, which represent a basket of stocks, give you diversification because they're spreading your risk over various sectors and areas, ranging from healthcare to agriculture to soft drinks to science and research. This diversification and spread helps balance out and reduce your risk and make you less subject to market fluctuations because as one sector goes down, another usually goes up. Popular indexes such as the Schwab S&P 500 or the Vanguard 500 Index Fund track the top 500 publicly traded companies on the American stock market. Companies listed on the index are Apple, Google, McDonald's, and have provided steady returns averaging 7 to 10% since 1980. Another one of my favorite things about index funds is their low expense ratios. These expense ratios can range from 0.2% all the way down to 0.02%. They are also less risky according to Spiva scorecards and are for people who don't want to watch their investments like a hawk and just want to put it on autopilot and not have to worry about it. The only time that an actively managed fund usually beats an index fund is during a bear market. This is called portfolio adjustment or correction. You can actually do this yourself with just a little practice. Index fund investing is more simple and easier to understand. You understand how it works, it's easy to set up and maintain. You don't have to meet with a financial advisor every month or semi-quarterly. You just set it and forget it. You can set up easy automatic withdrawals so your dollar cost averaging, buying at cent intervals so you're not trying to beat or time the market. Now the rules for investing are much more broad, but some of the basics are, one, if you're younger, you have time on your side. You can afford riskier growth investments, so your portfolio will contain more tech stocks and stocks in emerging markets, and you'll hold less bonds. Two, if you're older, you will want less growth and more focus on stability, preferring blue chip stocks of developed companies, and your investments in bonds will be higher than a younger person would have. Two top index funds are VTSAX, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, Admiral Shares. The expense ratio is only 0.04%, 25 times less than other expense ratios. Two, Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund. Look at the growth of this index in just the last year. A 15% return on the investment. And then the five-year return is even better. Now I get it. Financial advisor is very broad, generic definition to describe actually several different professions. I'm specifically referring to financial advisors that do investment and stock selection. However, being your own financial advisor comes with great rewards, but does require some level of competence and continual learning on your part. The last thing you want to do is start blindly shooting out money, firing at stocks that you know very little about and risk losing your money. However, with well-informed small steps, you will not only master the game of building wealth, but you'll be more in control of your finances. How many famous celebrities have you heard went broke or bankrupt due to their manager or accountant skipping town with their money or just not understanding their own personal finances? I just don't want to see this happen to you. I want you to take the reins and take control of your finances. Now, I'm not saying your financial advisor is going to skip town with your money, obviously, but it does parallel the moral of these stories. No one will ever care for your finances and your investments as much as you will. And that's a fact. If you want to know the top financial goals that you would want to hit by the time you turn 40, or if you're doing well financially, even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes, check out these next two videos right here.